Release the Kraken! Hi guys and welcome to 123MyT's video on the 8 GPU mining rig, the Kraken build. Okay guys, so in a previous video I showed you how to make a 6 GPU mining rig. In this video we're going to make an 8 GPU mining rig, plus we're going to use a Core i7 to mine uh, another coin like Electronium or Monero. Let's go through the components that we're going to use. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the Core i7. Now normally in these builds people will opt for a, a lower power, cheaper CPU. I'm going to take a chance here and I'm going to go for a quite expensive CPU uh, that uses a little bit more power but we're going to use this to try and mine either Electronium or Monero. Next thing we're going to need here is obviously an on off switch which you'll be able to turn your rig uh, power off and on. We're also going to need two NVMe PCIe riser cards. Now these will go on the motherboard and these will give us an extra two slots for our extra GPUs. 8 gig of crucial RAM as per usual. Now I went for, you can use 4 gig but I went for 8 gig and the reason why I did this, if I ever want to turn this uh, rig back into a gaming machine, I only need to add another 8 gig of memory and I've got 16 gigs of memory. Hard drive, you can just go as cheap as you want, Kingston. I've opted for a Kingston 128 gigabyte drive. Now obviously we're going to need this because we're going to need to store windows on this to run the system and we could do an NVMe drive but we're taking up both our slots uh, with the extender cards. The motherboard I'm going for the ASUS Prime H270 Dash Plus. Now this motherboard supports six GPUs on its own without the riser card so you can add in six GPUs and we're hoping that we can add in two more GPUs through the NVMe riser cards. Graphics cards, we're going for the RX 570 models. I like these models because they're low on power usage and they also do a higher hash rate uh, once the BIOS is modded. So they're really good cards to go for in my opinion. We've, got, we've also got a um, GTX 1070 NVIDIA card which we're going to add in as well. Power supply, we're going to use the Aerocool 750 power supply. Now I've chosen this power supply because it's a 80 plus platinum power supply. It is on the cheaper end, you can get different models. If you want, if you want to have other different models then go for it guys. All these bits of hardware you can change out, you can change around. I'm just showing you the basics, the basic setup and to get you started uh, mining with your mining rig. The next part of our build here and it's a crucial part as well is going to be the frame that we're going to put our mining rig components in. So this one here, if you saw my first mining rig build video, uh, this is actually a recycled set of drawers. So the drawers come out this way. What I did was take the top off here and put it down the bottom. And now we have three bays which we can store things on. So down the bottom here we we'll ha might have our power supply, then maybe a motherboard, and then maybe our graphics cards up the top. So we've got plenty of room to put in eight GPUs. If you want links to the hardware, I'll put a link in the description below. So if you need to buy anything, feel free to click on my links and support my channel. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and get our MVME M.2 riser, PCIe riser card installed. So there's a little nut that needs to go on in your motherboard first, which comes with these riser cards. And you also have a little screw that's, that it's going to set into. It even comes with a little screwdriver so you can screw it in. Okay, so now we've got both cards installed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that should give us eight GPUs. Next step here is to take out our RAM and get our RAM installed. And we want to face that towards the CPU. There's a little tab on one side which you need to push in first and then just simply push it in and push it down. Now a lot of people say about static and that I've never had any uh, parts fail uh, from static um, so if, uh, if you have some uh, parts fail from static please let me know in the comments section below. Okay guys so the next part to install here 
is the Core i7 CPU. Now I brought this CPU because it's low on power. So it's the i7-770 and it's a, it's not the K version, it's the slightly cheaper version. So for three reasons I brought this CPU. One is it uses less power. Two, it was cheaper around about $400 Australian. And three, it comes with its own fan, okay? Now, before I get questions about the fan and not applying uh, CPU thermal paste, I'll just show you really quickly, the fan comes with the thermal paste preloaded, okay? So you don't need to buy any thermal paste. Okay, so to install the CPU, there's a little lever on the side which you have to push across and then pull up. That will push you, that will open up the housing where you can sit your CPU and you just drop it in. Now there's two little um, uh, little divots on either side. I don't know if you can see one there and one there. So you can only really put the CPU in one way. All right, then you'll need to push, make sure the edge is pushed in, then push your lever down and then slide it under and then this just pops off the top. Okay, CPU fan just drops on top of the board like that. We're just gonna push the sides in. Fairly straightforward. All right, you'll hear them click. And then what you can do is you've got your fan uh, power here, or you've got one on the other side. So if you want to use up some of this cable, you can just kind of neatly move it around this side and then pop it in there. Or you can do a little tie. I always do a little tie and knot there, and then just put it on the board that way. Either way will do. Okay guys, so I've now mounted the motherboard uh, to the base of the rack. Now I think this is the best spot to put it because this isn't a pre-built case or rack, kind of just winging it about where I should position the hardware. So I'm going to go for the motherboard down the bottom. The reason why I've done it on this side is so that there's plenty of room in the middle of the rack for the cabling to go. Um, I've also moved it to the front here so that if you want to put a graphics card uh, on one of the slots directly you've still got some room for the um, graphics cards uh, to hang over the edge here. I'll just show you underneath, give you a shot there. You can see we've actually got a bit of space underneath the motherboard. So we've got our screws going down onto a bit of plastic and then uh, into the bottom of the board into the wood. Now I do get a lot of people say what about static, what about grounding? My understanding is that the static and grounding goes out through the uh, power supply, through all the uh, connection back to the power supply from the motherboard and from the graphics cards anyway. If I'm wrong about this uh, please leave a comment in the comment field below, I'd love to hear from you. So now we need to plug in the uh, power switch for the motherboard. Now they'd go in just here, I probably should have did this before I mounted the motherboard but it doesn't matter we can still do it anyway. So we've got uh, a reset switch and we've got a power switch and a reset switch, power switch light and then these four cables, they just plug into the motherboard uh, down there so we'll do that now. Okay guys, so I've got our three GPUs up the top and one GPU directly on the motherboard down below, that's our 1070 and it's going to power probably, it might do our video or we might use the onboard video, whichever works in the beginning. And I've also added in the power supply down below there. So I put it on this side to give us plenty of room uh, for the cabling. So the cabling is going to come out of the back of the power supply here into the motherboard and then up into the graphics cards in the top there. So we're going to use riser cards which are these little things here and what they allow us to do is plug in our graphics cards or our GPUs to the motherboard by not, not having them directly attached to the motherboard. So we're going to plug them in to the bottom of the GPU like so and there's a little switch on the other side which you just push through and that locks it into place. Into the riser card we've got our power, so this is a power there, a uh, six pin power plug which goes into our, our power supply. And then on the other side we've got a little USB cable which we'll then plug from here into the motherboard uh, via USB and I'll show you that in a sec. Graphics cards also use an eight pin connection which goes into the back of the card. You can see I've already plugged in the two Sapphire cards. Okay, so we've got our CPU cable. So our CPU cable will plug into our power supply and then just into our motherboard here. All right, and we've got our motherboard cable here. So we've got one that says to power supply and then the other one says uh, to motherboard. So we're gonna plug those in now. Now we're gonna put the other end of our riser cards into these small PCIe ports. 
down here. We'll put one on this side, one on this side, and we might try one in the riser card at the back there as well. There you go, so we've got all our USB cables plugged in there now. Now the next step here is I'm going to use one of the cables, which is the SATA power cable, or Molex power cable, and the other end of that is going to plug into this little port here to give a bit more power on that riser card there. We're going to plug in the last part of the card here on the end, but we've run out of six pin connectors. So I'm just going to use a straight IDE power or SATA power uh, to the six pin connector cable and to plug in that last card, riser card at the end there. Last but not least, one cable for uh, the Kingston um, SSD, 120 gigabytes, and that just plugs in like so. And then the other end of that's going to go into power. Now with a lot of these ones I've tried to just keep where I can uh, just plug in one cable to the to the uh, to the power supply and not daisy chain too many cables. So that's the best uh, best motto if you can get away with it. If you can't, then you should be able to daisy chain. I mean, other end of the SSD go okay, plugs into the SATA cable. So we'll just plug in our SATA cable there, and then the other end of this one plugs into the motherboard. Okay, guys. So she be, she should be all plugged in now. Uh, so the Kraken is ready to go. Things that I should mention, uh, plugged in the video cable directly into the motherboard, Ethernet cable, mouse, uh, keyboard. Okay, so this is a pretty good sign here. You can see that uh, the Asus Prime has detected all the, uh, all, the, all the hardware, so it's detected our Kingston hard drive plus our new CPU, the i7, so that's really cool. And it says uh, to press F1 to enter setup, so we're going to do that. Alright guys, so there was a few issues. Uh, with the, I don't know, it seems to be the riser cards. So the computer wasn't booting for some reason with the riser cards plugged in. So we'll come back to that after we install Windows. We're going to use Windows uh, USB, Win64 Pro, uh, to install Windows. And as you can see, that's running there now. I always get the question, where do I get Windows 10? Well, if you head on over to the 123myot.com website, you can click on Store and then Software. And if you scroll down, you can click on any of the Windows 10 links here, and that will take you through to the Microsoft website, and you can buy Windows 10. Otherwise, if you want to download it, you can go to the search bar up the top and type in Windows 10, and then press Enter. And then if you scroll down to where it says Windows 10 Media Creation Tool, and if you follow that video, that will show you how to download Windows 10. Okay guys, so we had a few issues with one of the Sapphire cards, which I had to remove. So it seemed to be faulty or not uh, not working so well. So uh, whenever you would plug it in, you would just get kind of a blank screen on the computer and the computer wouldn't boot. So we've, we've got rid of that one and I've managed to pick up some other hardware. So we've got a few more of these RX 570s to go in and I'll show you that in a bit. And also we picked up an extra power supply, 850 watts platinum Aerocool. Uh, it's probably the cheapest one out there is the platinum at the 850 watt uh, mark. And we're going to use a cable to plug that power supply into the other power supply. Um, so that when you turn the, turn the computer on they both power up. So uh, let's get to it. There's a little safety switch on the side of these power supplies. So whenever you're doing any work like on the motherboard or anything like that, just flick this off and that will stop the power coming through. Okay, so here's where it becomes a little bit tricky. We're going to unplug this power supply from the motherboard, like so. And then we're going to plug the other end of this three-pronged power supply, which is this one here, in into that. Like so. Then we've got two more points. The big point will go back into our motherboard and this little one over here will go to our other power supply to turn it on when we turn the main rig on. Okay, so we've put our 850 power supply up the back here and we're just gonna plug it in to the other power supply like so. All right, so and the other end obviously goes into the power supply there. All right guys, so just for troubleshooting purposes, it's probably a good idea if you just plug everything in one at a time even the power supply and these cables, I've just turned the machine on now, just to make sure it powers up with that uh, with that new power supply and that cable plugged in, and it all seems ready to go. So now we're going to just try and slot in our cards. 
Now remember you can use any types of cards and you can actually see I've got a whole heap of different cards here um, due to availability so at one stage I'll probably try and get them all matching so they're all the same card but you know you can't always have it exactly the way you want it so just start off with one card and then slowly build the rest of your rig that way better with one card then you only have to troubleshoot one sort of hardware okay guys so the Kraken build is live so we've got seven GPUs in here we've got six across the top one down here and we're also uh, just doing some mining um, ETN mining uh, on our CPU there if we have a look along the um, riser boards or riser cables you can see there we've got all of them all six in plus we've got the one that extra one at the back there uh, also plugged in and obviously we would have another spot here uh, for our eighth GPU uh, when we get that going so we would have had an eighth GPU however our uh, riser card and our sapphire card broke on us the other thing too is because we don't have all standard cards you can see we've got this one uh, RX 570, the Aurorus card, which is kind of sitting there at the bottom. That's because uh, it won't actually fit in the slot there. It's actually a lot smaller than the other RX cards, so it uh, won't fit across the top there. If we take a look at our mining, you can see our mining there. We've got our triple coin, so we're mining Ethereum and Decreed. And then down here, we're mining uh, some uh, ETN. With the CPU. Power draw from the wall for both power supplies is about 1300 so that's not too bad I guess you could probably add another 150 watts uh, to that to that total if you were to add in a, another card there. If we drop it back and just do Ethereum only then you can see the wattage at the wall here drops back to about 11, 1140. The i7 CPU that will do around 200, 260 uh, hashes per second as a CPU mining uh, for ETN. Alright guys, so let's talk about stats. Now I know you guys love stats and how much uh, till this rig will pay itself off. Now this rig is a high-end rig, I would say. Uh, this is probably one if you want to spend a lot of money and get some decent results. So we're going to calculate basically how much it is uh, per day. So per day, it's about $20 uh, per day return on investment. Now this is earnings before power. If we take into account power, let's say our power, here in Australia it's pretty damn expensive. So it's about $8. Let's say it's about $8 per day to run the rig. So that leaves you with the $12 per day um, profit. Now that's pure profit. So if we times that by 30, 30 days in a month, it's $360 a month. That's $360 a month after power that it's going to make you back cash in the hand. So total cost to make this rig uh, in Australia was $2,072. Now this is converted from Australian dollars to USD so these parts might actually be cheaper to buy uh, in the US than they are in Australia. Because of the US market parts are generally a lot cheaper. So 2,872 divided by 360. All right. So we're looking at return on investment is going to be about seven months, about eight months. And then after that, that 360 a month is just cash in your pocket. Now this doesn't take into account inflation of the coin. So it depends if that coin goes up in value, then obviously that will, will come down. If that, if that uh, price drops in value, then obviously that time will go up. Okay guys, so once again, that's it from me. If this was a helpful video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe for more great videos and thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.